Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ has truly risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Yay. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Praise the Lord. Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This traditional Easter greeting celebrates Christ in our midst, resurrection in our midst, and that all things have been made new. Welcome to worship with Ravensworth Baptist Church on Easter Sunday. We give thanks for resurrection and one another as we call ourselves to worship today. This day is just like any other day, alarm clocks were beeped, covers were removed. Coffee was brewing and weary bodies were coming to life. But this day is not like every other day. For the sun rose and we knew it was a miracle. The tomb was empty and they knew it was love. So again and again we say, the longest night is over and death has lost its sting. Jesus is among us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Verdaderamente ha resucitado. Alleluia, amen. Again and again and again. Alleluia, amen. God, creator of all, today is the day of Easter joy. This is the morning on which the Lord appeared to men and women who begun to lose hope and open their eyes to what the scriptures foretold, that first he must die, and then he would rise and ascend into his Father's glorious presence. May the risen Lord breathe on our minds and open our eyes, that we may know him and follow him in his risen life. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. This Easter, we return to our practice of prayer, where we have silence and you're invited to call your prayers aloud. I will offer a prayer and we will say the Lord's Prayer together. So this morning, amongst alleluias and amongst great hope, let us enter into the silence. O oh, resurrected one, there are a million ways that you speak to us, God of the garden and God of the empty tomb. You speak to us in rituals, both formal and organic, in drops of water on foreheads and vows set at the altar, through pieces of bread dipped in ordinary wine, and through shared candlelight on Christmas Eve. You speak to us in nature. Your artistry shows up in starry nights, in the smell of pine, in rushing water, and in every sunrise. You speak to us through our relationships, the comfort of a loved one, the laughter of our friends, the security of those who support and cheer us on. You speak to us in so many ways, and we are grateful for them all. Today, speak to us in just one way. That would be enough. Lean down and breathe life into these sacred texts and promises of resurrection. We are craving to hear like never before, to understand, to see ourselves in the story. You speak to us in so many ways. God, we ask for you to speak to us in just one this morning. As together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
our gospel lesson today from the last chapter in Mark, where we have been during this season of Lent. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early, on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. And they entered the tomb, and they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and they fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. I'll say it again. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. I believe that proclaiming that on Easter Sunday is a wild act of hope. We proclaim it whether it's bright and sunny or cold and rainy. We proclaim it whether worshiping apart or together. We proclaim it when everything else in the world makes us think it doesn't really make sense to proclaim it. And we know a thing or two about disruptions and life not making sense. It is our second Easter worshiping apart. Holding that grief alongside our resurrection seems like just the thing we need to do this morning. I'm not sure resurrection can even exist without grief. We are still living out this particular story of life together during the pandemic. When we come out on the other side, we will be a changed people. We'll be transformed, carrying the grief, the hope, and the love that we've experienced during these months, during this year. We will be an Easter people in fuller ways than we understood before. We tell our sacred stories again and again because the stories have deep truth and remind us of hope. We tell the stories of RBC and our families and beyond because within them there is power and deep truth. The Gospel of Mark has led us on a fast-paced trip through Jesus' life and ministry during the season of Lent. And in this past week, Mark has spent time, more time, more detail, and more narrative than at any other time in the gospel. The week that we call holy is where Mark has been pointing us all along. The week we call holy witnessed a palm-waving protest procession, tables overturning as a matter of justice, fig trees dying, disciples feasting and betraying, and a command to love. We also heard Jesus on the cross saying, I can't breathe, after a sham of a trial was held, all to keep the law and order folks happy. And Jesus died and was placed in a tomb on Friday. The disciples named Mary Magdalene, Mary, and Salome came to anoint Jesus' body as was the custom early in the day on Sunday. They were worried about the normal things. They had seen the size of the tomb. How would they roll away the stone to get him to be able to get to him and tend to his body? And when they got to the tomb that morning, they saw the stone was rolled away already. No doubt creating confusion and fear within them. Who else was there? Walking alone in the garden early in the morning wouldn't be the safest place for three women anyway. But as they looked in, they saw a man 
sitting in a white robe, and he told them, Do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's been raised. He's not here. Look, there's the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you'll see him, just as he told you. So the women left the tomb with fear and amazement. and They didn't say anything to anyone because they were afraid. And so ends Mark's gospel. That's resurrection for Mark. People hearing transformational news with an invitation to proclaim it in the midst of fear and grief. Proclaim that hope is here, that love wins, that death does not have the final say. I think Mark's account of Easter is an invitation for everyone who hears it to keep telling and living the story. As disciples of Jesus, like those earliest three that first Easter morning, we finish the story of resurrection. Mary Magdalene, Mary, and Salome told people. They had to. After their initial shock, they proclaimed this good news of resurrection. Sometimes we need a little time and space to process what's happened in our midst. Grief, transformation, and hope mingle together to form our understandings of life and love. That's resurrection. I've seen the risen Christ this last year, and I've watched and witnessed how RBC has continued to live out this resurrection story as followers of Jesus. I've seen the risen Christ in porches and through windows, as we visited with one another. And the scheduling of vaccines by our deacons to make sure all of our members have access. I've seen the risen Christ in the thoughtful discussions around atonement, around how words matter in the faith formation of our kids and ourselves. In the hope-filled celebrations of drive-by birthdays and Zoom Bible studies and Sunday school classes. I've seen the risen Christ in the faith-filled process of budget creation and discussions around stewardship of our building for community use, and in the ACA food drives and pantry drop-offs. I've seen the risen Christ in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup each week with our own flavors, which is a beautiful reminder of all we bring to the table of Jesus Christ. Relationships have carried us through this last year. Our life together will be resurrected into something new together at Ravensworth Baptist Church. We will never be the same after the grief of this last year. We will be transformed and in our grief and in our hope and in our love, we will live out this story of resurrection. In Bible study this week, Bob Sampson and Don Moore showed us what resurrection proclamation looks like in community as they finished one another's sentences. As we pondered this ending of Mark, Bob began, Story isn't over, folks. This isn't the end. And Don jumped right in. It's the new beginning. Indeed, the story isn't over. This isn't the end. It's the new beginning. The new beginning is the one we live out together, following the risen Christ right back to the community where we share love and do justice and build that community. That is good news. So again, I'll say and invite you to join me wherever you are. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. As Reverend Carly Stuckland Sather has written, we come to this table rejoicing with those who laugh and sharing the tears of the grieving. We are God's children in wonder and in loss, dispersed and gathered at the same time, 
God invites us here no matter what. This invitation to the table exists for all people. This invitation exists for you and for me. This invitation exists for you no matter what. God shows us the way and welcomes us to this feast. On this Easter morning, as we gather at the table of hope and love and justice and promise, at the table of resurrection, we remember when Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat and remember me. And then he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Drink it, all of you, and remember me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and his resurrection until he comes again. On Easter morning especially, we give thanks for resurrection. Amen. We are indeed the voice, the arms, the feet, and the love of Christ when we relate to others as ministers of the body of Christ. We bring before you, Christ, all that we are and all that we have, our time, our talents, and now our tithes. Amen. Amen. Oh,
to be with the Ravensworth Baptist Church community today on this Easter Sunday. On behalf of the personnel committee, I just want to remind everyone that our pastor Leah will be starting a leave for the next few weeks, and I know that we all want to respect her time away and keep her in our hearts and prayers. With that, I'd like to turn things over to April and to Michael for more words of gratitude and blessing. On February 23rd, 2020, we hosted Leah's installation service. The day was momentous for us as a church and for Leah as a woman and a faith leader. We had high, high hopes for what her tenure at Ravensworth would look and feel like. But less than three weeks later, tragedy struck the entire world. We were forced apart, separated from our beloved physical church and our church friends and family. It was a devastating blow to our ministry. We build community. We share love. Those are verbs. Some of us were scared. We wanted normalcy in a world of chaos. And guess who delivered that gift to us? Our brand new pastor, the Reverend Dr. Leah Grunsett Davis. She kept us together during a time of separation. Pastor Leah, please accept this blessing on behalf of the congregation. It is written in the book of Joshua, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. While that verse is applicable to the entire world over the past 12 months, it was especially so for you. While I am certain there were tears, you didn't let them blind you. And while I know there was uncertainty, you stood strong and true. You led us with grace and patience and love. And we are grateful to you for shepherding us through this time. We could all rest knowing we were in your care. And now it's time for you to rest. We pray the next four weeks brings you warm coffee and bright sunrises on your patio, snuggles with your girls, good books to read, and long walks with John. We pray you have times of quiet contemplation and meditation. We pray you return to us well-rested and ready for all the wonderful moments we will surely encounter at some point this year. Thank you, Leah, and be at peace in your time away. It's never easy being a pastor, but the past year has been incredibly difficult. 
Worship has required more effort and coordination. And pastoral care has been made more challenging by social distancing. Every pastoral and leadership responsibility took more time and has taken more from you, Leah. You richly need and deserve a time of refreshment and renewal. So take your mind off the church for a few weeks, though I know your heart will still be with us. Let us take the calls and texts you usually answer, plan the services you usually plan, and care for the folks for whom you always care. No one can take your place, but I'm honored to fill in for the next four weeks as you receive this gift of time. I'll preach and respond to pastoral needs until your return on May 3rd. These next few weeks are a gift to me, allowing me to do what I love. I pray these weeks are a gift to you too. Perhaps that's the best kind of gift when the one who gives is the one who receives, and the one who receives is the one who gives. God's grace and love enfold you as you enjoy the gift of your time away. God bless. Receive this benediction this morning, a blessing from Jan Richardson. If you are looking for a blessing, do not linger here. Here is only emptiness a hollow, a husk, where a blessing used to be. This blessing was not content in its confinement. It could not abide its isolation, the unrelenting silence, the pressing stench of death. So if it is a blessing you seek, open your own mouth. Fill your lungs with the air this new morning brings and then release it with a cry. Hear how the blessing breaks forth in your voice, how your own lips form every word you never dream to say. See how the blessing circles back again, wanting you to repeat it, but louder. How it draws you, pulls you, sends you to proclaim its only word. Risen, risen, risen. You are God's beloved, and with you, God is well pleased. Go be resurrection people and keep living the story, my friends. We go in peace on this Easter Sunday. Amen. Amen.